Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another art journal video. Today I'm working again on one of uh, the pages from my 6x6 square journal and I will start with rice paper. For today I'm working again with the same collection that I did work with last week since I do have lots of it in my stash and I want to go through on some of the images that uh, are available in the pad. So I'm going to mix and mat a couple of the rice papers for my background. And I picked a couple of different colors, so a bluish one and a brown one. And I'm going to mix them uh, after cutting them in little rectangles directly on top of my page. For sticking everything down, I'm using my rice paper glue and I'm going to create kind of a patchwork. Notice that I like to overlap the pieces, this way I get uh, that uh, shading, different shading here and there, and it makes the background really interesting. You can definitely go ahead and cover up the whole page completely, you can only stick some uh, rice paper here and there. I like for this little journal to keep it uh, kind of in the same style for every page, so I mainly allow for a little white border all around. I am not shy with applying the rice paper glue on top of my page. I like to uh, apply a good coat and then also I use that glue to cover up the rice paper. This is going to seal it down and at the same time it turns, in, it, turns it into being non-porous which allows for lots of techniques on top of it. When I apply the rice paper glue on top you might see that it is kind of milky but it dries completely uh, clear and it also dries completely matte, which is an absolute favorite for me. So step one was to apply some rice paper. Step two is to add some white. On this page, I'm going to use a stiff brush and with white paint, white acrylic paint, I'm just going to add some brush strokes. These are completely random and you can cover up any darker areas that you don't like or any overlapping that kind of um, is very vibrant. Just uh, make sure that you don't cover up completely what is there. You still want to see that uh, design coming through the white layer. For the next step, I like to do some stamping and I do have a bunch of stamps that I use for my backgrounds. This is one of them. It is from my latest collection and uh, I'm going to use this uh, big one. I like to use it um, uh, completely randomly in different parts of my uh, project. I don't even notice if it is upside down or anything, but I'm not going for the perfect impression. You can definitely do that if you like. I like to end up with more organic shapes and not complete uh, perfect um, rectangles. So you see here I'm just inking only one side of that big stamp and I only press on one area. So that's why I don't get the perfect impression. You can even use it without a stamping block. This is going to allow for stamping in different parts of the page and at the same time you get more control on exactly what you want to transfer on your page. Now this is going to give kind of a vibrant look on the background because of the black stamping. You can definitely use a different color of ink that is more close to what is already uh, to the colors that is already on the page, which is going to give an interesting background, but at the same time, time keep everything quite subtle. It is kind of a choice of design really. Next step is time to use our stencils. I did use this stencil uh, on the on last week and I did use a different part of it. Today I'm going with a crackle on one side and I'm going with glamour paste and I decided to go with ancient pink. It is a lovely copper color. I am going to apply some of uh, that design on my page, but you will see that at the end, I end up covering up most of it. This is when I say that I don't really design from the beginning what is going to happen on my page. Here I'm just having fun with this layer, with the layer of um, uh, the stencil and the paste. But uh, when I will play later on with my focal points, I will feel like the most pleasing to the eye composition will end up covering up some of that stenciling. You can definitely go back and add some stenciling on uh, blank spaces if you like, 
but I really don't do that. I don't really care about it at all. So I'm leaving that page on the side to dry and let's look uh, through that paper pad for uh, uh, images that we can use as focal points. Now you will see that there are many quirky animals to use as focal points in this paper pad. I think it is a great collection for those who do art journaling. But uh, I remember I saw some images of cats and I want to make a cat page. <laughs> so you will see that um, I'm going to put together kind of a story on my page today. So I'm going for family portraits today, family portraits of a family of cats. And I'm using these frames. These come from the paper cutouts. You just pop them out and use them as they are. You don't have to do any fuzzy cutting with this product. And at the same time, it doesn't give any white border all around, which is perfect for journaling. So in this page, you can see the whole family, all four cats and just one of them here, I'm going to stick those frames on top of those images and cut them out. Before putting everything together, I am doing a little bit of ink blending around the images. This is going to help them pop against the frame even more. But of course, this is a step that you can do later on if you like with your uh, brush markers and other ways of applying shadows. So now all I have to do is to add some glue around the frame and just stick it on top of my portraits. The glue I'm using here is my matte glue. This allows for uh, some uh, mistakes because if the glue oozes out in between those paper cutouts, it's not going to show at all, it's not going to be shiny because it dries completely matte and it disappears. Now from the paper cutouts, I'm also going to uh, pop out a few more elements like uh, gears, which are going to be used later on to embellish my whole composition. Now, if you notice, everything is already pre-cut for you, even the inside pieces, those blank spaces. All you have to do is to just poke them out. And now it's time to put together my composition. Now, in all the pages that I did before in this journal, I always used my rice paper glue to stick everything down. And I also used the rice paper glue to cover everything, to seal everything, so that I could use later on my big brush markers to do the shadows. However, for today, I'm going to show you that that's not important uh, every time. You can definitely omit some of the steps on this journal and you will still get the same look and feel. So here I'm just playing around with all those parts that I have uh, uh, collected for my composition and I'm not going to do any type of shading afterwards. So I'm just uh, embellishing the whole composition with some gears here and there. And uh, I will also add the sentiment. And now I found a quote which is absolutely hilarious for this specific page. So I'm going with, if you met my family under one of the portraits, and then on the other cut, I'm going to stick, you would understand. And these come from an old booklet that I have by Tim Holtz, which is full of sentiments. I think it is the um, snarky uh, one that uh, gives you lots of fun uh, quotes to use on journals. But again, it's a very, very old uh, product and I don't think it is actually available. You can definitely print out your sentiments. I always say just use your printer or your label maker. You can use your stamps or just use a marker and write down whatever you like. This is just the way I like to do it. So I used the fine black marker to add some sketchy lines around some of the cutouts, mainly to separate the frame from the main image inside, which really made a difference. I used my white gel pen to add some highlights and finally I'm adding some white splatters. Here are some close-up photos on the project that I made for today. Just like always, a list to all the supplies that I used are down below in the description. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.